are official Institute Associates this year. Um, we're thrilled to, to be back. Um, we have a long history of supporting Sundance and the festival. Um, this year we've had a number of, of really fun activities we've been doing here. Anthony, you want to talk about what the Yeah, are? the big thing that we did uh, was the 30th anniversary of the GLAAD Media Awards is happening this year. So we announced the nominations um, live from Sundance Film Festival. So we were at the AT&T space um, and it's a really exciting time, 30th anniversary. Uh, 27 categories, two award shows, March 28th in LA, May 4th in New York. So that was our big thing. We had MJ uh, Rodriguez from Pose and Nico Santos from Superstore and Crazy Rich Asians. And they were both double nominees, so good years for them. So it's been a really exciting time. And then... And then we announced a new partnership on Sunday at Outfest Queer Brunch with The Blacklist. Uh, we announced the inaugural Glad List which is the first ever list we're doing um, to highlight some of the most promising LGBTQ inclusive scripts that reside on the blacklist. Uh, you can read more about that online. Um, and then on Tuesday afternoon, we have a panel at Sundance's Filmmaker Lodge um, titled Beyond the Transition Narrative, Transgender Storytelling in the 21st Century. And some amazing names on that panel, including Reese Ernst, who directed Adam. Alexandra Gray, uh, Rain Valdez. And James Seamus. Yeah. Sundance has always been the festival for LGBTQ creators and film, film people. I mean, this place has a long history of launching some of the biggest LGBTQ films we've ever seen. I mean, uh, just a couple years ago with Call Me By Your Name premiering here. Um, last year, I think there were 27 titles. This year, there are close to 15. Um, and, and the LGBTQ inclusive films I've seen so far this year have been absolutely incredible. They've all knocked me out of the park. And uh, uh, really, really impressed me. Yeah, and it's been a really like kind of almost like a full circle moment because last year was our first big return to the Sundance Film Festival. And films like The Miseducation of Chloe, of, um, Cameron Post. I must say, not The Miseducation of Chloe Grace Moretz, but The Miseducation <laughs> of Cameron Post. And um, A Kid Like Jake were films that we were very involved with. And then to see them get Glad Media Award nominations for Outstanding Film has been, um, you know, like a really nice full circle moment. And like Jeremy said, Sundance really is like the place for inclusive and diverse films. And, you know, it's just a great feeling to be back and seeing the next yeah. wave of it. You, you can't keep telling the same stories. And what we're starting to see is much more diverse depictions of the LGBTQ community. For example, there's a film here at Sundance this year called Adam, um, which it's kind of a period piece now. It takes place in 2006 in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. But it follows this amazing group of young trans uh, diverse folks who it's a coming of age story and it really is the future of uh, I think storytelling within L the LGBTQ community. Yeah and I think on that for me seeing more opportunity that we're seeing for trans actors um, and trans people playing trans characters is so important and you know the way it has to be done um, and I think we're seeing just and you know so much bigger opportunities with that community and it's something that we're really you know focusing a lot on because Trans people are under attack, and you know we have got to change that conversation for sure. It's an evolving state of LGBTQ media, very much in 2019 right now. I mean, we just saw the shuttering of Into, which was a huge disappointment because they had incredible journalists over there. But at the same time, a lot of those journalists are going over to some more legacy publications like Out and The Advocate. Um, so it's evolving, it's changing. Um, digital media is having a challenging time right now. You know, uh, the layoffs at BuzzFeed recently and, and Mike and everything that's going on there. And I don't think LGBTQ media is exempt from the overall industry things that are happening right now.